What's up everybody? Welcome back. This month, we're getting mini with it. Check out this video where I've designed, built, and flew this fully 3D printed sub 250 gram micro sport cam. My name's Eric. Welcome to 3D Aero Ventures. So one of my big goals with 3D Aero Ventures is to make 3D printing your own RC model a little bit more accessible. Um, so I wanted to design something that's a little smaller form factor, has fewer parts, and, and first timers can just kind of be free to experiment with different finishing options and different materials and stuff like that. But I also wanted the aircraft itself to be a really capable flyer for those that are experts in 3D printing and, and something that would please the expert as well. So what I came up with is a scaled down version of the twin engine sport cam that I developed in an earlier video. So this one is a little bit simplified as a single engine. The internal components are relatively inexpensive. So it's running off of a, this is actually a quad motor. It's an Emax MT1806. 2280 kV motor and running off of a 2S 650 milliamp battery. You can bump that up all the way to a 3S depending on you know what kind of weight you end up with on your model and then also how you need it to balance up front. You can get a little heavier 3S battery if you need to. So this is capable of being printed in standard PLA or, or other kind of heavier plastics but these two here are actually printed in a material called lightweight PLA or LW PLA which we'll dive into a little bit later, but that helps get this design down in the sub 250 gram category. So these here are around 220 grams, um, finished, painted and everything. But if you were to fly it unfinished, you're gonna hover around 200 to 210 grams, which is nice and light. So this has gobs of power at that weight, but is actually capable of flying with this motor at the heavier weight of around 300 grams in standard PLA. Um, but I definitely highly recommend printing it in lightweight PLA. It just really improves the flight characteristics. If you program in some flapperons into these, which you can do because I'm running uh, two servos, one for each aileron, um, then you can get this thing flying nice and slow. Pull those flapperons up and it'll actually fly pretty quickly and is highly aerobatic. So this is a really, I think, a design that's capable of pleasing kind of the expert pilot, but as well as the novice or intermediate pilot as well. So let's dive into the design build and flight of this micro sport cam. While this does look like a pretty simple design, there's actually some pretty interesting engineering challenges with the motor mounted way up high. So hope you learned something there. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Let's get building. I already had the micro sport cams big brother modeled so I could start with that base model and scale it down from a 60 inch wingspan to about a 27 inch wingspan. Rather than going into painstaking detail on this CAD design, I'll just give you some of the highlights. The larger models I have designed in past videos use a more dense zigzagging ribbing structure to add as much strength as possible. But given the much smaller size and weight of this model, I can afford to greatly simplify the internal ribbing design to help cut the weight as much as possible without sacrificing strength. As I mentioned in the intro, I've optimized the design to be printed in a material called LWPLA or lightweight PLA from a company called ColorFab, which is incredibly lightweight, but it has more flexibility. So I found it necessary to design separate servo trays that I'll print out of standard PLA, one for the elevator and rudder servos in the fuselage and a servo tray for each aileron servo. I also really wanted builders to have options with how they configure the landing gear. So I designed different slots into the fuselage so I could set this up as a tail dragger, complete with larger backcountry tires, or as a tricycle gear configuration, which makes takeoffs and landings quite a bit easier for those that aren't proficient with a tail dragger yet. So the first few prototypes flew okay, but I experienced quite a bit of downward pitching of the aircraft when the throttle was advanced, which made keeping it trimmed in nice level flight tricky with different power settings. So let's dive back into the CAD model for a quick physics lesson from your Uncle Rico. Back in 82, I used to be able to throw a pigskin a quarter mile. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. We know advancing the throttle results in the plane wanting to pitch down. The motor on the sport cam is mounted above the aircraft's center of gravity a certain distance. When a linear force is applied to a body at a distance away from its center of gravity, the result is a rotation or moment around the body's center of gravity. 
The magnitude of the moment is determined by the magnitude of the force multiplied by the distance from the center of gravity at which that force is applied, as shown in this moment equation here. There are several ways to reduce the magnitude of this moment, one of which would be to reduce the distance the motor is mounted above the center of gravity, but this isn't an option with this design because the propeller would strike the fuselage. So the other option is to utilize the horizontal stabilizer to create an opposing rotational force to the one the motor thrust is creating. Traditional aircraft are designed with a long aft section of the fuselage so that a relatively low amount of force is required to pitch the aircraft up or down using the elevator on the horizontal stabilizer. In this case, we want to apply a downward force on the horizontal stabilizer to create an equal opposing rotational force to the one created by the motor thrust. Back to our moment equation. Because we're applying a downward force at a much greater distance from the center of gravity, the magnitude of force needed is low relative to the force created by the motor. We could create this downward force by simply adding some up trim to the elevator, but this isn't very efficient, and once you back down on the throttle, the rotational force caused by the motor will be reduced and the aircraft will want to pitch up. So you'll constantly be retrimming the aircraft with each throttle setting. Instead, we'll rework the design in two ways. First, by redesigning the shape of the horizontal tail's airfoil to essentially be an upside down wing, we'll create a slight downforce. Secondly, angling the motor a few degrees so the thrust line is pointing up ensures the horizontal tail is in the path of the airflow created by the propeller. As the throttle is advanced, the downward angled airflow creates a slight downward force on the horizontal stabilizer, creating that equal and opposing rotational force we were looking for, no matter what the throttle setting is. So with the redesign done, I was ready to print the final prototypes. As I mentioned earlier, I've printed this plane in a material by ColorFab called LWPLA. This is a PLA material incorporated with an active foaming technology. So when it is printed at elevated temperatures, in my case 250 degrees Celsius, the material foams and creates a very low density part. This foaming action causes single walls to be thicker, so the material is printed at 30 to 40 percent the flow rate compared to traditional PLA in order to hit the target wall thickness. So the result is a part that is 30 to 40 percent the weight of traditional PLA parts. This is pretty exciting stuff, especially for aerospace applications. If you decide to play with this material, you'll notice it strings quite a bit more than standard PLA as it prints, but these are easily removed with a file or hobby knife. The parts are assembled similarly to designs shown in my past videos. A quick sanding of the joints to create some grit for the glue to grab onto, and just using a basic medium bodied super glue or CA and some accelerator to create an instant bond. LWPLA is a bit more flexible than PLA, so I decided to incorporate carbon fiber rods through the fuselage to increase its strength. The rest of the parts are assembled in a similar fashion. And one of the things I like about LWPLA is how well it finishes. After the main components were assembled, I decided to smooth and paint the parts before final assembly. So after sanding each component with 220 grit and 400 grit sandpaper, and cleaning the parts with isopropyl alcohol, I sprayed each part with one to two coats of a water-based polyurethane spray to seal them. This also helps fill in layer lines and actually stiffens the parts up a bit. It also makes masking tape and decals stick better. So for masking off the areas I didn't want spray paint applied, I used three different products. A thin, flexible pinstriping tape is used for detail work and for creating rounded paint edges. A standard painter's tape or masking tape is used for blocking off some medium-sized areas and the largest chunks are blocked off by wrapping them with kitchen plastic wrap. I really like using Tamiya brand spray paints for smaller models like this. The cans are small and a little more expensive, but the particle size of the paint is noticeably smaller than some cheaper paints, and it dries super fast, so the risk of getting runny paint is low. With the separate parts painted, I gave them another coat of the clear polyurethane and completed the assembly. I decided to create two prototypes, one as a tail dragger and this one here in the tricycle gear configuration. Since this plane is so small and transporting it isn't really an issue, the wing is permanently glued in place. And I use some one millimeter carbon fiber rods as the wing struts, which when glued in place really stiffen up the wings, so I wouldn't skip these. The push rods are attached to the control surfaces first, then the control surfaces are held in place with a one millimeter diameter carbon fiber rod, which acts as the hinge. From there, it's just mounting the servos, motor, and other electronics, and programming the radio in preparation for the test flights. Ah, ah. 
I'm utilizing one servo for each aileron with this design, so I decided to program some flaperons for more interesting slow flight characteristics. So each aileron can be lowered to act like flaps, but still maintain being actuated for aileron control. After a final balance check, I was pumped to take these tiny flyers out for a spin. So before we get to flying these Microsport cam models, I just wanted to say thank you to SolidWorks for sponsoring this video. And outside of their awesome desktop CAD software, they actually have a web-based platform with a ton of different apps. And for this particular project, I dove into their project planning app, which allowed me to set up every step I needed to go through to complete this project, set some deadlines for myself, and it really helped keep me on track to get this project done. So thank you, SolidWorks. Back to the video. When I was a teenager, maybe 13 or 14, and full of angst like most teenagers are, I distinctly remember moments where I thought I knew how the world worked and demanded my parents treat me like an adult, which is of course ridiculous. During those times, my mom would always give me the same piece of advice. Eric, don't be in a hurry to grow up. Just enjoy being a kid. Now over 20 years later and with kids of my own, I get it. There are times in my life where I've hit plateaus. I've lacked curiosity, I've stopped questioning and learning, and didn't make time to play. Things that come naturally to us as kids. The responsibilities of adulthood can be tough, and so many of us let go of the things that brought us pure joy as a kid, with the thought that we need to have more serious, quote-unquote, grown-up priorities all the time. Of course, we have to eventually become responsible adults, we have to grow up, but that doesn't mean we have to stop growing. Personally, there's something about aviation and the thought and creativity that goes into designing these model aircraft that awakens the kid in me. It brings me pure joy. It's a nerdy hobby that frees me up to never stop questioning, never stop exploring, and never stop playing. <laughs> 